tell Tony it's some real money in the room. How you doing today, brother? I'm good. Who um, got in front of the camera today on the Bob Report? Tony motherfucking Weary's. You know, everybody know who me. Everybody know me. Okay, okay. <laughs> so, um, where, where you from, Tony? For those who don't know, I'm from Fort Worth, Texas. I'm from the South Side. I'm a crib. Excuse me. I'm a crib. I'm from the <laughs> South Side. Everybody knows. Okay. <laughs> you from the South Side. So, what was it like growing up um, on the South Side? In uh, you know, Fort Worth is a heavily mm -hmm. populated with, with with gangs. Yeah, there's a lot of gang stuff going on. A whole lot of gang shit over here too. You know. Um, I grew, it was really hard growing up. I was picked on in school and shit, but you know, I ended up growing up and you know, I let all of that shit go and then I ended up getting into some trap, you know, some gang shit, stuff like that. Uh, I was put down um, in what, 2009 and so you then- put down? Yeah. So you actually really got put down. There's a lot of yes. people that claim gangs have never even been put down before. I know, but I'm not one of them. I actually was put down. I got put down with Crip and shit. I'm from the South Side. Um, you know, I'm definitely, you know, I don't have to cap or lie about nothing. You know, a lot of people had tried to say that I was lying and capping when I came out with that song, I Guess She Mad. Because I came out with a song, I Guess She Mad, a long time ago about my friend that got hit with a rock. And I heard about that. Yeah. Uh, my homegirl, her name is Nikwa. Um, she got hit in the face with a rock, got bust upside her mother's head by Tootie. They went viral, didn't they? Mm, it did. I'm the one that orchestrated all that. You orchestrated that? Yes. What, what do you mean? Like, I put it together. I'm the one that, you know. It was fake? No, it wasn't fake, but like, I'm the one told her, hey, go fight her. You know, and I set it up and I told Tootie, go fight her. Tootie is another rapper out of Fort Worth. Uh, Nikwa, well, she not really a rapper, but when I made my song, she jumped on it. But I'm the one that told her, like, you know, go fight her. Like, y'all go do that, you know. And nobody knew that Tootie was going to pop out with a rock, you know. And she bust her upside her mother's head. I saw it on, online, man. Yeah. It went viral. Yeah, it went viral. It was all over. Everybody was talking about it. People still be talking about that. So when you, you mentioned uh, a few minutes ago that you, you were picked on. Mm-hmm. Why were you picked on? Because, you know, I'm gay or whatever the case may be. And, you know, back then, it didn't got a little better. People are more acceptance of gay people now. Like, it's a lot of gay rappers coming out here. I'm able to walk around comfortably now, you know, and be cool with a lot of the straight dudes in Fort Worth. Shit like that, you know, it don't be nothing or whatever the case may be. But as a child, you know, back then it was a lot different. You know, people didn't play that. You couldn't, you couldn't be gay openly, yeah. you know, but... Things have changed a little bit more. Laws didn't been set in place, and people really don't give a f no more, you know. So that was why I was picked on in school. But I ended up. Did you fight a lot? Yeah, I had to fight all my life, like Seedly off the color purple, yeah. and you know, I was picked on for a long time, and then I got tired. I ended up meeting some new friends, some Crip friends, and they had them the people that had put me down on the south side. So I would call you and. Entertainer. Mm -hmm. Would you call yourself an entertainer? Public figure, influencer. You know, I've, I've advertised a couple of clothing lines. Um, uh, entertainer, definitely, because you know I do a lot of stand-up comedy. Sometimes, sometimes I do. I do my own podcast. Um, I have my own show, and people, you know, say that I'm funny. You know, I'm the funny one of the show. I'm the funny one of you know, Facebook, Instagram, and social media in Fort Worth, Dallas. When did you get started? Well, let me say, like. Well, yeah, I can say, when did you get started and when did you figure out that this is what you were going to do, entertain people? Um, in 2014, actually. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, Slim Body. Ever sure. heard of him? Okay. Yeah, um, in 2014, I got into an altercation with a few of his little crew and his little gang members and stuff. And I ended up getting into a fight with him. And that fight went viral as well. And that. You had a fight with somebody? Yes. You had a fight with somebody? I had me, my skinny had a flight, fight with Slim Body. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes. How did that turn out? It didn't turn out good for me, but you know, um, yeah. <laughs> I we got into a fight. We met up at a park and we fought. All my friends was fighting. I had a lot of friends back then and we was, we was just all out there fighting. I had my, uh, her name was Baby Nose. Uh, they used to call her uh, Baby Nose. Baby Nose. Okay. She from, sound familiar? 
This is nah. back in the day. Yeah, nah, don't. <laughs> this is back in the day. That, that was what was popping back then. This was a long time ago, 2014. 2014 was my come up year. Okay. And I had a lot of fights during that year. That's really what put me on the map was me fighting and stuff and going so, live was after a lot the of these fight. fights. Um, publicized like people saw them like oh hell yeah Yeah. all over was going viral millions of views um and what happened was is what people caught on to me for was after i would have a fight regardless if i won or lost and a lot of my loss i would go home and make a video about it and talk about how i got my or whatever the case may be or the fight and they felt like that was funny so you know that's what put me in the entertainment feel was the fights i was having and coming home making a live video about it i had this thing so you would have a fight with somebody you probably lost mm-hmm. you still gonna make a live video i'm still gonna make a live i'm saying yeah i got my with my band-aids on and everything else with, with my got bumps i didn't give a fuck. i didn't care if i lost the fight won the fight i'm gonna mother fight and i'm gonna come home and make a mother video about it and i'm gonna tell everybody what happened you know and i would be sitting there you know and it would go viral every time. So, so that's what put me on the map. Viral, and then your video after it would go viral. Would go viral also. as well. That's right. Okay. So um, what all do you do? I do a little of everything. Um, so uh, as far as business, I do taxes. But on the entertainment, excuse me, the entertainment side, I have a show. It's called Tony's Cabaret. And I have T Mess and Mo. T Mess and Mo is like a messy podcast where we talk about all the little mess that's going on in Fort Worth, Dallas. Sometimes we'll talk about some other shit like with NBA Youngboy or some stuff like that. If you know he got 10,000 kids, we will we'll talk about all type of mess. Anything mess. That's why it's called T Mess and Mo. Mm-hmm. And um I also do um advertising. I advertise people's clothing lines. Um, or any type of products or stuff like that on my social media and our platforms. That's pretty much all I do. You you also said you make music and you do stand up comedy. I also make music. What kind of music? You a rapper? I'm a rapper. I'm a trap rapper. I rap about a lot of the trap stuff, you know. <laughs> um, I'm a trap rapper. I have a lot of you know trap. You know, don't let this fool you. You know, I'm a street. Okay. You know, <laughs> I'm definitely street, you know, I'm a gangster and stuff. So I didn't make some trap music, but I also made like some some pain music, kind of like some ride wave type shit or some the Riz, the Shun okay. or, you know, some stuff like that. I do everything. You know, my music is actually good. You know, if people, I get a lot of good reviews on it and stuff. So that's another entertainment that I do. And people like my music. I've been on World Star Hip Hop a few times for my music. Okay. Um, how did you how did you obtain such a loyal fan base? Because it seems that pretty much anything you do, mm-hmm. you have a large crowd of people that follow you. I think it's just that because I'm authentically myself. Like you know, I don't try to switch it up. I'm gonna always be myself. And you know, being yourself sells. You know, like when you try to fake and script and do stuff like that, it don't always go as planned. And people not people people gonna know bull. Like, you know, we in 2023, people know how to read between the lines and see boots. And I don't be spitting nothing fake. Like, it's, everything about me is just 100% real. Like, I'm not going to beat around the bush. Like, you're going to get Tony Mother and Weary, you know, and that's that's my slogan. That's that's who I claim myself to be. I have a chain that says Tony Mother and Weary, it just ain't here right now because it's at my mama house and I didn't feel like going to go get it. Okay. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it's been said that... um. Uh, you 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 carry a lot of mess. You 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 miss it, miss yeah. it, Tony. Yeah. Uh, well, where does that come from, man? The realness of myself, like just being real, and you know, I like to say it how it is, and you know, I like to keep up a lot of, you know what I'm saying. But it ain't because you know I be having an evil intent behind it. It's just like it is what it is. Like, so you, what, what would people consider? Um, you being messy like give me an example it's just always some stuff going on with me and my friends like it's always somebody fighting talking behind somebody back or somebody being messy or telling some that shouldn't be said and then next thing you know it's on Facebook and that's going viral too you know like my homegirl Kiosha she's like one of the stars she is the star of my show that's the one who be putting the mouthpiece in that's the one who be putting the mouthpiece in dun, 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 dun. yeah <laughs> yeah um a lot of stuff be going on with her. I want to say the most mess come from her. 
you know. Somewhere. She didn't she didn't been through a lot of like, you know, she's another me, you know, she tells it how it is. She don't mind her business being on social media. That's how I am. I don't give a f as long as it's true. Like I don't like when the lies get put out about me. But as long as it's true, I don't give a f like she had a at home abortion. She had at, at home abortion um, in her bathroom by herself. by herself, and she put it on Facebook what for everybody to see. She recorded the whole thing. She recorded herself sticking something up her and pulling something out. She took some type of abortion pills. I don't know. It's this a video. In, this was in Fort Worth. It was in Fort Worth. Yes, it was 2018, I believe. And she put that on Facebook. And that just shows that she just genuinely herself. Like, she don't mind. Now, it is stupid. Because you didn't have to record it. But it's like, you know, that's you just... you have to go to the hospital after that? I actually don't know. I th I would think so. But I don't know. I, I was just trying to figure out how the fuck she pulled a baby out her by herself. But, yeah, true facts. Okay, uh, about the show. Tony's Cabaret. Yeah. Um, genius idea. How did you come up with that? How I came up with the Tony's Cabaret show is around the time, this was in 2020, uh, Jocelyn had came out with her Jocelyn's Cabaret. And, you know, that was what everybody was talking about. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had a music video for my song called Mertie. Called who? Mertie. <laughs> Mertie is what you use of your everyday life, you know, to pay for stuff, you know, so you can live. So Mertie is, is money. Yes. That's exactly what that is. And everybody needs some. And that was what the song was about. So I took all my friends to L.A. and we did a show. Well, not a show. We did our music. We did my music video. So when we did the music video, I had all my friends with me. The music video for Mertie? Yes. You got a music video for that? Yeah, I got a music video for it. They talked shit about it on Say Cheese TV. Did me bad. Was talking about Ooh, what what the little Nas X is going on here and all them little comments that they was talking over there on Say Cheese. That's why I don't fuck with them. But yeah, they was talking shit in the most comments. Don't y'all ever post me on that shit again. But <laughs> <laughs> um. We flew out of town and I took all my friends with me. But during the course of me doing my music video, it was a little beef that was going on. There was some people that was stinking on the trip. People was having little, you know, woman issues going on and stuff. And people was getting mad because it was getting out. And it was a couple of fights that happened on the trip, you know, that went viral as well. And that was another thing that kind of put me on the map as like a person, like, because everybody was tuned in and stuff. So when I got home, I was like, this shit, I'm gonna turn this into a reality TV show. You so that. yes, and I called it Tony's Cabaret because it started out as a joke. Like you know, it's not really a cabaret. It's just everybody on my, like everybody I hang around with. They got kind of like what a cabaret trait. Like some of my friends still. Um, <laughs> uh, some of them used to be strippers, but ain't strippers no more. Uh, some of them, you know, everybody. Some of them got a cute face, cute body, and stuff like that. They look like strippers. So yeah, I was like. We finna call it Tony's Cabaret. And that's what came up with Tony's Cabaret. I feel like my show is the number one show in the DFW. All these other little shows, like, I don't know, they got something called Certified. And I just feel like that everybody, if you come, come out with a show that's called Certified, all the bitches at least need to be certified. Like, they need to have a blue check mark by their Instagram name. And then they got something else called DFW Baddies. All they doing is fighting. So nobody wants to see that bullshit. My show got real life storylines in it, relationship, mother, um, you know, fighting and stuff like everything. It ain't just fighting. We got real stories to tell. So the cast members, mm -hmm. um, the majority of them, you know them all. Yeah, they are my friends. All of them, your friends. Mm -hmm. So can anybody? Because I can see where this is going. In the future, will anybody be able to cast somebody that you might not know? They might come from out of town. They might come from. They might be here. You might not know them. Mm -hmm. Can they have a chance to get on Tony's Cabaret? Yeah. Um. This was season. This is season. It's not really season two because this is our first time professionally filming it. Season one was the trip that we took to L.A. Season two is the actual professionally filmed show. Season three, I'm gonna start. Casting people from different states like Louisiana, got New York, uh, L.A., where we where it started at, you know. So hopefully it do 
blow up that much to where I can't start pulling people from different cities and then expand this. And we also gonna change the name too. So right now it's pretty much just on Facebook. Okay. It's on everything. Uh, I have my own app actually. My app. Say that again? My own, it's on it's on everything. You can watch it on Instagram. You can watch it on YouTube. You can watch it on Facebook. But you're not gonna be able to like. It's kind of like you gotta catch it at a certain time. But if you wanna watch the show, like watch it, watch it. You can download my app. It's called Tony Rivers Network. It's on the Apple Store. It's gonna be available soon on uh, the Android market, which nobody should really be purchasing it from the <laughs> Android market because, you know, everybody has iPhones now. So if you're watching it from an Android, you know, you probably can't afford it anyway. <laughs> but uh, you can also watch it on uh, the Roku, Roku okay. TVs. Everybody got a Roku TV. I don't give a where you stay at, projects. Everybody got a Roku TV. So it should be no excuse why you shouldn't be able to go tune in. Um. This is a question that I'm pretty sure a lot of people uh, that are not from Fort Worth probably wonder. Okay. Is it scripted? My show is definitely not motherfucking scripted. Like, I went to jail on my show. It's public records. You can Google, like, everything about the show. Kiosha really going through her breakup on the show. Robin uh, is another one of the cast members. Her house was broken into. She's talking about that. Wendy Dorche, uh, she got married on my show. Um... We don't have no scripted shit. Nequa, you know, she's talking about her relationship and her beef that she got with Kyosha on the show. Bree Smith, she's talking about how she's a retired person that used to work at the strip club and no longer working at the strip club and her struggles through going, being a retired stripper. So none of our is scripted at all. Everything happened genuinely, like it was natural. Didn't nobody whisper in nobody's ear and tell them to do something crazy. We don't so do that. fights on her, they just really like, Hey, what's happening? Mm -hmm. They just get it on. Yeah, that's that's that happened during that. I didn't know that none of that was gonna happen. You didn't know none of them. Yeah, hey, oh, I swear to God. You know you said you be setting up messy stuff. <laughs> so did you put it together, Tony? Did I, I just hang around a lot of messy mother. <laughs> you know, and it just be stuff be happening. I don't be controlling none of that. Like. If I could, I would, but I can't make nobody do nothing. You be on there fighting too, don't you? Oh yeah. I had like th 10 fights on there. On I fought my ex, my ex boyfriend, which is on the show. I fought uh, some named uh, Spice Lee. Uh, so uh, a guy named Spice Lee? Yeah. What he, what he got going on? <laughs> he got mad. Okay, so I fought him because I really don't even know why the fuck I fought him. He, uh, <laughs> he was just taken up for his bitch. And like, you know, I, my issue was really with the bitch. You know, her name Daisy. And I was getting into it with her over something. I don't know what I was arguing with her about it, but is anybody, any not finna let no put his hands on on they like this is just law, which I don't So you fought her. I didn't fight her. Okay. I wanted to. But like I said, it's by you fight law. Girls and dudes. No, I only fight girls if they put their hands on me. And she acted like she was gonna put her hands on me. So she kept on saying, "On oh God, when I see you, I'm gonna whoop your ass and shit like that." So when you say that to me, I'm thinking that it's really gonna happen. Cause me, when I tell people I'm gonna whoop that, I, I do it. You know. So I expect <laughs> everybody to keep that same energy. So when I saw her, like I thought it was up. So instead of her running up, her ran up. And y'all got it on. Yeah. And I whooped it. Just so it just so happened that the cameras was rolling. And that's on the show too. So if you want to watch the show, you know, you could download my app at Tony Rivers Network or you could follow the Tony Rivers Network fan page on Facebook. You you mentioned earlier that you um you've been to jail before, you've been to prison? I haven't been to prison, but I've been to jail all my life. All my life growing up I didn't been in and out of jail. I didn't pull the gun on somebody. I didn't oh, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> uh <laughs> I didn't, uh, I, I, I've scammed before. I didn't swipe visa cards. I did the 70 action code, which I don't mind talking about that because I've already been convicted and shit for that. The 70 action code, it was like this little lick that everybody was doing with Walmart and shit where you go in Walmart and you finesse the cashier oh, to I put some. That Walmart, mm -hmm. I yeah, that. I was doing that. And I don't mind saying I was doing that because, like, like I said, convicted, felon. So. I'm a convicted felon or whatever the case may be. So, um, I don't mind telling people that you story. Convicted felon, mm -hmm. I got three felons. 
But I, I was given good deals to where I didn't have to go to prison. Like they gave me probation. Uh, one time I did weekend jail, and another time I had to do like a whole bunch of community service. And so I had like, I got blessed with good deals. I had some good lawyers. When did you, when did you know that you liked men? Um, I feel like from birth, to be honest with you, because I never liked the females. Never. Um, I never liked the females. Like I've always dealt with men. You know, I've actually dealt with a very famous, well, not famous. I wouldn't even call him famous, but he a real popular rapper in Fort Worth. You know that I dealt with. Yes, true facts. Oh. Um. Yeah. Huh? Do I know him? Yes, you do. Of course I know him. Yes, you definitely know him. Um, but, you know, I don't, you know, put people business out there. But what I was getting into is ever since a child, I, I always knew that I liked guys. You know, I, I never really liked females, you know, and I used to act like I liked the females because I was trying to withhold the image and shit like that. I was trying to, I didn't want nobody to judge me and stuff like that. But then I stopped giving them and I ended up started dating and you know, but I'm a different type of gay. Like, I don't be, I'm not a disrespectful type of gay. Like, you know, I respect men. You know, like, if you a man, you like, you, you, you is what you is. I'm is what I'm is. I'm not going to try to, I'm a no. You know, you're you going to let me know if you roll that way. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to have to ask or nothing like that. Like, you're going to just let me know on top. And, you know, the, the men that don't, you know, I'm cool with them this day. I got a whole lot of homeboys that I hang around with. And it don't never be because I know that at the end of the day, you know, you got to respect. It's a respect thing. That's all it is with being gay. Have you ever been with a woman before? I acted like I was being with a woman, but it was disgusted and didn't really want to be there and was just trying to with her uphold the image. You don't want children? I have kids. Well, I have one kid. Hold on, man. Mm -hmm. What you mean you got kids? I got one kid. How? The way I had my baby is I went over my friend house, which I call her right now, mm -hmm. and she took my and put it in her insides. And she gave birth she to a baby. Herself? Yeah, she did it. Well, I helped a little bit, you know, but I ain't really just do too much. Like, I just <laughs> I just helped a little bit, but did I like her like that? No. Nah, we was just trying to, we was doing some shit. I was drunk and shit. Like, I was drunk and high and motherfucking on all type of pills and Next thing you know, in the morning time, she didn't end up with my inside her. And next thing you know, a couple of months later, she didn't turn up pregnant. How old is the child? My child is one years old, finna be two in March. A boy or a girl? A boy. Stupid, so you got kids. Yes, I had kids. Well, no, not you kids. Got I got a child. Everybody was surprised when they found out that I had a kid, you know, but. I still got man body parts. You know what I'm saying? I still got man body parts. I might be a on the inside. Well, no, I'm actually on the inside and a on the outside. But so you, you you said you have a you have a child. Yes, I do. And how you say that happened again? So what happened was is I took my stuff and put it inside my baby mama. I didn't have to put my physical. Okay. You know my yeah. manly part inside her. I put it in a cup, and then she put it inside her. So, so, so she didn't even go to the hospital to get what's it called kind of insemination or whatever. No, nah, she did her. We did it at the house. We did the and ghetto. The baby still yeah. came like regular. Yeah, the baby still came. I swear we could have a movie. She literally took my, which I know what it is, and she, <laughs> and you know I'm using code where you know I ain't trying to get nobody blocked. Yeah. You know because you can't say certain. Yeah. Um. And she put it inside her, and she had the baby like that. You know, she got pregnant and everything. Um, what's, your name? what's my baby name? Yeah. My baby name is Jaden Willrich. Jaden. Mm -hmm. Okay. Jaden Willrich. Uh, he he bad as, f but yeah, I got a baby. You know, me gay gay can have babies too. Like people be yeah. th people ask me all the time. They be like, you got a baby, but ain't you not trying to be disrespectful? You know, they they'll hit me with that look like that. And I have to let them know, like, I still got man body parts. I still can have babies. I can shoot just like regular straight niggas can shoot. Would you have more children? To the guy now. You won't do it no more. No, my baby bad in the motherfucker. I don't want no more <laughs> kids.
them kids. <laughs> so who who is Dion? Dion is my ex boyfriend from. <laughs> that mother. Okay, what happened was is I got with him in 2016. He started beating my. He started putting his hands on me. He he was abusive. You know, back then I was I wasn't as I was I'm skinny now, but I was skinny than the mother back then i weighed like 110 yeah. and he was a lot bigger than i was so he used to like take advantage of me like anytime i would do anything wrong if i would say something wrong i couldn't even breathe wrong he used to slap the f out of me or beat beat my ass. i don't know if you can kind of see it a little bit but i literally recently just got into like an altercation with him and he beat my ass again is this like a um would this be called a domestic domestic violence relationship yeah that's what my tax office revolves around that's why my tax office colors is purple and gold because I was once in a domestic violence purple you know situation and I made my way into the gold like you know purple and gold that's my business colors that's why my uh, mega refund revolves around domestic violence it helps you know we help women that's been Your through domestic office? violence yeah yeah mm -hmm. and where is Dion now probably somewhere talking about me because you know he obsessed with me he always talk he always on Facebook talking about me like running his mouth it all be lies he be telling the people that i be stealing people tax money and shit like that be lying like he's just mad because he broke and don't have no money and me i have all this shit. like i got a mother 2022 s7 audi i got a bmw a tesla and all this shit. two uh, uh two condos you know like he don't have none of that you know <laughs> the only thing he got is a phone bill so he bad because i didn't became successful of him beating my so you feel like him doing that to you is how you obtain yes that is how i obtained everything so i really owe him a lot you know so i'm grateful that he beat my you know that's I'm, through the tax office yeah the tax but it's not just the tax office it's also you know that put me indoors to be able to do things like this like that that sponsored and funded all of my creativity that i'm doing now like my show my team smo podcast and everything that i'm doing so you know is he on the show yeah well he's not really on the show he just we just booted his ass in for a little bit so he can do his little scenes and so he could talk about going to jail and shit like that other than that he's not on the show he's not one of the cast members he's just a supporting cast is what we like to call it hmm. <laughs> yeah what do you um so where's what does tony weirich see for tony's cabaret in the near future what's your end goal my end goal i would say that it's for it to be like another love and hip-hop a success it's a show for women it's only women on the show i'm the only oh. i'm the only man that's on the show okay so it's for women to tell their story like i'm telling my story like i'm letting everybody know what i've been through to get to where i'm at now um and it's um, it's specifically targeted to women that not just work in a strip club but women that just been through a lot of shit, period like then had to do certain things to get money like you know sell your body you know uh this is a very hard industry for women so like you know i got some people on there that are models and people on there that you know mothers you know this industry is real hard for women so that's basically what it's about it's not just about working in a strip club tony's cabaret that's why we're going to change the name of this show next season to something else but most of the women are all from the metroplex yes I, everyone is from fort dallas fort worth that's on my show so it's a dfw based show but it's gonna just start in dfw we're gonna expand to all different states and cities where do you do you plan on getting it to a well you have your app so mm -hmm. that's where you're going to put it at you're not you don't so if, like i don't say netflix or tubi or zeus when they because they're going to come when yeah come, what are you going to do then i don't want to build nobody else's brand um i want to build my own you know i don't want to good luck to y'all you know best of luck to y'all but i want to build my own brand so like Anybody that's going to reach out to me that has been people that didn't reach out and I declined because I want to build up my Tony Rivers network. I don't want nobody telling me, OK, well, you should do it like this or you should maybe do it this way. No, I want to be able to person. I want to be the person to create my own and tell me how to do it. You know what I'm saying? I don't want nobody over me. What do you see? Yourself, Tony Woodridge, in three years? Being a multimillionaire, having a nice big.
mansion, being married and having maybe one more kid, maybe if I reach, you know, that level of happiness in my life. Um, and the show is going to definitely take off and it's going to be successful. It's going to be the it's already is the number one show in DFW. You know, you don't see nobody else talking about nothing else. All the other shows that's coming out, I'm about to give a fuck about that shit. Everybody be talking about my like that's all you be seeing. People be mad when I don't release. So like my is what's gonna pop. All of the no. You feel like um this area you got this area on lock. So yeah. When, show, when you say hey March twenty third, mm -hmm. blah blah blah, this one is coming on. Oh, and it's coming back on March first. Tony's Cabaret is coming back March first. So y'all tune in. And you, it's, it's, you know. And I know that everybody's gonna tune in. We're gonna have over five thousand viewers. Like. Like at the same time, like I'm the only person in Fort Worth, Dallas, that be on a live. Well, well, I mean, I don't compare myself like to you know the CJ Casinos of the world and the <laughs> uh, Kenny B's and the uh, Goyeos and stuff like that. You know, because you know I'm I'm up there with y'all, but like I'm still a pedestrian. So, yeah. you know, so but this many people be on your your Facebook live, stream? Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, everything. Oh, hey, yeah. Do you, do you, is this all at one time? Uh, so it streams it simultaneously okay. at the same time from Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, um, all at the same time. So you can watch it at all platforms and you can watch it on the app. The only thing is if you want to be a person to go back and watch it, like rewind or fast forward or be able to watch it again, you got to download the app. If you watch it on the platforms, you're going to be able to watch it at one time and that's it. And if you miss it, that's it. Okay. But yeah. the app is $5.99 to download, and it's available now. Now, you can download Tony Weaver's Network app Well, Apple right now. Well, by the time they see this, yeah. it'll be out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, man. Uh, thank you for coming to sit down with the Bob Report. Definitely. Man, I had to come tap in with Tony Weaver. I've been hearing your name. Um, it was it was glad um, I was happy to meet you. Yeah, nice um, to meet you. I you know, and I'll be back. You know. So, and I uh, keep going, brother. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Hey, real tone, it's a real money in the room.